Hello, this is Oded Hadas from Tracepan Communications, and today's video will be about virtualized OLTs and how to test them. Let's start with an introduction to the ONF Core project and architecture, which defines the virtualized OLT. So CORD stands for Central Office Re-Architectured as a Data Center. This is a project which was initiated by the ONF. It's intended to transform the network operator's central office into an agile service delivery platform. It enables the operator to deliver the best end user experience along with innovative next generation services. The core platform leverages SDN, NFV, and cloud technologies. It provides a complete integrated platform with everything needed to create an operational edge data center with built-in service capabilities. And it's built on commodity hardware using the latest in cloud native design principles. Now, since uh, GPON or PON is uh, being more and more used as uh, the access network, CORD has dedicated significant time and resources to define the architecture of the GPON and XGS PON network elements. And talking about the access network, the GPON network or PON network in general, uh, this was uh, depicted in the VOLTA architecture. VOLTA stands for Virtualized OLT Hardware Abstraction. This has been defined as the recommended architecture for PON. The OLT can be realized as a white box handling the optical interface and the MAC layer. And the other OLT functions, including OMCI, are all virtualized. And this diagram here shows you the main elements of the Volta architecture. Now, talking about OMCI virtualization, let's talk about the goals and benefits. So the main goal is to simplify the ONU selection for the service provider by resolving the interoperability problems that are common to traditional OLTs and ONUs. And let's look at this for a minute. You have an OLT from vendor A, and you have ONUs from other vendors, call them vendor B and vendor C, and you connect them and something doesn't work. The service is not set up correctly, or you're not able to get the rate you're expecting, and very often, if you're a service provider and you talk to the vendors, you'll find them pointing fingers at each other. Each of them thinks and maybe really believes that his side of the network is working properly and a problem is the other end. But that may be the case. I mean, it may be that each end is working correctly, but there's still interoperability problems. Now, why do these interoperability problems happen? The major cause for this is the OCI protocol. This is the management protocol that is used in the PON technologies, GPON, XGS PON, and some others. Uh, and the main cause is differences in OCI implementations of different vendors and different models. And just to give you the uh, idea of why this happens, uh, OCI has various complexities. It defines about 400 different types called classes of managed entities. These are the basic building blocks that are used to describe the MIB. Only a subset are mandatory. Every ME has various attributes with allowed values. There are more than 300 additional classes that are reserved for vendor specific use. So even though this is a standard, which is intended to allow different vendors to interoperate, there's still significant room for vendor specific implementations. And then to add to this, there are 17 different versions of OCI. OCI started in 2004 and the last main amendment is from 2017. So during the years there have been 17 different versions and each version had different MEs and some changes in the attributes and not everything is backwards compatible. We can imagine what these complexities can cause in terms of interoperability. Just an example of 
an interoperability problem, the OLT tries to set an attribute of a standard ME. This is not a vendor specific one, a standard one. And the ONU fails to recognize this attribute. This is an example of the message exchange recorded with Trace Plans Analyzer. And you can see that the OLT is trying to set something and the response is attribute failed or unknown. The attribute was failed. For whatever reason, the ONU did not accept this. So how does OMCI virtualization resolve this? It resolves the interoperability issues by decoupling the OMCI software from the OLT and moving it to the cloud, thus allowing multiple versions of OMCI to run in parallel. So you have the OLT, which is the white box, and then the virtualized OMCI in the cloud. The cloud-based management software knows which OMCI stack to use for which ONU. And when an ONU registers on the pawn, the software pushes the right OCI for this ONU to, uh, to the virtualized OLT. So the virtualized OLT knows that this ONU can use OCI number one, this can use OCI number two, this can use OCI K and various options of OCI. So based on the vendor ID, serial number and registration ID, the virtualized OCI pushes the right version for each ONU. And a version means which managed entities are used, which OMCI version is used, which optional manage, managed entities are used, which vendor specific ones are used and so on. Now, this uh, brings some challenges in testing it because how can you test that all these different OMCI versions can run in parallel? So let me introduce some solutions that TracePad has for this. Uh, the first, and very significant solution is the multi ONU emulator. This is a single box that can emulate up to 256 ONUs. It has emulation of the PON Mac and the optical interface, and also an OMCI generator and a traffic generator. And each emulated ONU can be individually configured to behave like an ONU of a specific vendor and model. And each could be specified to have its own OMCI configuration file. Just to give, to get an idea of how you configure it, this is the configuration screen of where you define your different emulated ONUs. You can see here we have an example of nine different ONUs. And if we zoom in, we see that each one has a different vendor. The four first four letters represent the vendor. You can see different vendors. Uh, each one can be configured with its own vendor ID, different serial number, different registration ID, different OCI MIP file. And looking at the OCI, you can see that this is the OCI vendor. Uh, you can configure different attributes. This is an example of the OCI version, just one of the attributes that can be different with each of the emulated ONUs. And here you have the option to define this specific version, as well as defining other, other attributes like the version, the serial number, the vendor ID, uh, the software version, and so on. Uh, so this is one testing challenge, which can easily be addressed with the multi ONU emulator. Uh, another testing challenge uh, the integration of the white box OLT and hardware Mac layer with the virtualized OLT functions coming from different sources and different vendors very often introduces new interoperability problems, at least in the early phases of integration. So even though it's intended for the long term to simplify the network, just look at this diagram of all these different building blocks, which are all open source and can come from different sources. Definitely, this can create new problems. So TracePen has two tools that can help with this as well. One is the expert analyzers for GPON and for other pawn technologies. Uh, these analyzers connect to the pawn, sniff the optical signals, and present and analyze the message exchange between the OLT and the ONUs. So this allows you to analyze and find the sources of interoperability issues, among others. Uh, another tool is, or set of tools, are the OLT emulators. Uh, these are tools for standalone testing of an ONU. They can record the OCI messages from an OLT. And then playback 
play them back into the ONU for testing the ONU as if it was connected to the virtualizer OZ. Uh, just as a comment, all these challenges and all these solutions are also applicable for traditional PON uh, and not only for the virtualized PON. But of course, if you invest in them uh, right now and you're working on traditional PON, you have a solution ready for the day when you start moving to virtualization. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we have a series of webinars, including a webinar on virtualization with more details on the website. So you're welcome to go and watch these videos. You can learn more about our company in tracepad.com or contact us at info at tracepad.com. If you like this video, give us a like and we will be glad to hear from you. Thank you.